12 to 20. Vamos a abrir la escritura, uh, la palabra de Dios, y la escritura de hoy es de Primera de Corintios, capítulo 12, empezando en el versículo 12. And I'm going to read a portion for us in Spanish and then the entire uh, scripture for us in English, but you can follow along with your language of the heart um, as well. So let's go ahead and uh, open our ears and open our hearts to hear the word of God this morning. Vamos a abrir nuestros corazones para escuchar la palabra de Dios esta mañana. First in Spanish, then in English. First Corinthians chapter 12 beginning at verse 12. Primera de Corintios, capítulo 12, empezando, versículo 12. De hecho, aunque el cuerpo es uno solo, tiene muchos miembros, y todos los miembros, no obstante ser muchos, forman un solo cuerpo. Así sucedó, sucedió con Cristo. Todos fuimos bautizados por un solo espíritu para constituir un solo cuerpo. Ya seamos judíos o gentiles, esclavos o libres, y a todos se nos dio a beber de un mismo espíritu. Ahora bien, el cuerpo no consta de un solo miembro, sino de muchos. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 12, where we reflect on unity, even amongst diversity in the, in the body of Christ. Verse 12. Just as a body has many parts, but all its parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Verse 14, even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, Where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Just as he wanted them to be, says the Lord. Verse 19, if they were all just one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Amen the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Vamos a orar. God, you are with us here. And before any of us even got here today, you were waiting for us. You're meeting us in this place, in this space, oh God. Dios te damos gracias porque tú nos encuentras aquí en este lugar hoy por tu presencia. Lord, you are ahead of us in the journey and you guide us, Lord. In whatever challenge, whatever season, whatever desert we find ourselves in, whatever wilderness, whatever confusion, Lord, you are there. Lord, would you give us a confidence that comes from you? A confidence that is not based on circumstances, but just on you. Lord, give us faith that goes beyond fear. Danos seguridad, Dios Santo. Danos fe que va más allá del temor. Give us confidence and faith that goes beyond fear, beyond circumstances. And Lord, take us to you. You are the one we need, Lord. You are the one who supplies, Lord. You are the one who is our refuge, who is our cover, who is our strength, Lord. Take us to you. And in this season, whatever it is that we may be going through, Lord God, Yes, we rejoice with those who rejoice. We grieve with those who grieve. But the joy of the Lord will be our strength. The joy of the Lord will be our confidence. You, Jesus Christ, will be our refuge and our shield because your name is a strong and mighty tower. Te damos gracias, Señor, por ser nuestro protector. 
Lord, we love you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our strength, with all of our mind. And we pray, Jesus, that today you would meet us here, Lord God. You're already here. We're becoming aware of your presence today. Thank you, Father. Be with those who share in their testimonies and as we continue to lift up songs of praise to you, God. It's in your beautiful and faithful name that we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're continuing this month in the month of July with testimonies. Estamos siguiendo adelante con los testimonios este mes. And we do that every single summer where we change things up a little bit. We go from just the standard um, receiving the word, hearing the word, to actually engaging and taking part in sharing the word and in encouraging with a word to one another. Sharing of God's goodness, of God's faithfulness, of, of, of the hope that you've experienced in Christ. Um, hacemos esto todos los años cuando tenemos tiempo para testimonios, para uh, demostrar nuestra esperanza en Cristo. And this is a way that we actually love one another every year. When we encourage one another. You know, the New Testament has over 90 one another claims. Care for one another. Love one another. Admonish one another. Uh, uh, carry each other's burdens. And that's part of what we do here this month when we share our stories, share our testimonies. We learn to love and encourage one another and carry one another. Cuando compartimos los testimonios es una manera que nos podemos apoyar juntos como comunidad. So that's why we've actually been in this uh, series that we've been calling Lift Every Voice. We're really, we've been just sharing our stories of who God has been in each one of our lives. And it's been incredible to just hear, um, uh, again, some of our story in the story of our sisters and brothers in Christ. And we've heard stories so far and testimonies of perseverance, of hope, of finding strength in the midst of very challenging times, finding hope in areas of life that we thought were completely hopeless. And we're going to continue to do that here today. Each person here has a story to tell. In fact, the Bible is the story of God and humanity. This is really the story of us and God. And here in the month of July, we take opportunities to just be part of that story and share that story together. Um, and so it's been incredible to hear examples of how people have found their uh, faith, hope, and love in Christ in uh, very uh, challenging circumstances, and also how the joy of the Lord has continued to clear a path and give light to each one of us in this season. And some of the theme verses that we've been um, taking part in and memorizing together um, throughout this month and throughout the summer, especially as we're preparing for uh, uh, you know, a new location, a, a fall launch once again, and continuing to, uh, to trust God in this new season. Um, there's been a couple of verses that we've been um, focusing on, and one of them is from Luke chapter 1, verse 37. And we can put it right up, and we're all going to memorize this verse throughout the summer. You can pray it every single day. And it says this, For nothing will be impossible with God. Amen? Amen. Let's say that. Let's pray that. Let's speak that to one another. For nothing will be impossible with God. Porque para Dios nada es imposible. Nothing will be impossible with God. And that's part of the story that we tell when we share testimonies. We're sharing with one another. Sister, brother, be encouraged. For nothing will be impossible with God. Nada es imposible para nuestro Dios. Es lo que compartimos en los testimonios. And of course, in the spirit of sharing, we know, just like it says in Romans 12, 15, right? We rejoice with those who rejoice. We mourn with those who mourn. Um, and, and so we know that we're all in a season. And whatever season that may be in, we're going to be there for one another in that. Whether we're rejoicing, whether we're grieving, whether we're somewhere in between. That's what it means to be the family of God, the body of Christ, united as one. 
even though diverse, right? Different parts are going through different things. But I love that image that we just read in the scriptures in 1 Corinthians, right? One body, different parts. I don't know about you, but has anyone ever here um, smashed your toe when you're walking and you just smash your toe all of a sudden? Now, when that toe is in trouble, is it just an issue for the toe? It's the whole body. <laughs> the whole body. You're not going to sleep well until that toe is okay. And in the same way, the body of Christ, we are one, yet many. We're different parts, play different roles, different lives. Amen. But telling one story of God's faithfulness. So we're going to continue in that spirit of sharing. And I loved last week how we got to hear stories of God's faithfulness, of God's goodness in our lives. We got to hear our sister Joanna preach to us about the timing of God. It says it's not your timing or mine, it's God's timing. Our sister Emily got to share about placing, uh, re- keeping in mind who God has placed in your life. They're there for a reason. God has placed people in your life to serve and follow that leading and see the Lord do something incredible in and through you. Escuchamos testimonios la semana pasada de uh, obedecer el tiempo de Dios y servir a aquellos alrededor de nosotros. Um, Nancy got to share with us how it's never too late. It's never too late for God. And our dear sister Nancy is 85 years young. Amen? (laughs) And she's reminding us that it's never too late. It's never too late for God to do that new thing in you. And especially when you feel like you can't, Yes, you can in Christ. Our sister Ruth got to share that we can rejoice and find strength together in the house of the Lord. Better is one day in his house than a thousand elsewhere. So we received that encouragement and that joy from um, the God's people from these mighty women of God last week. And I did say it last week, men, you need to step it up. Seriously. It's not a joke. <laughs> 100% serious with it. We asked for testimonies. Four women of God raised their hands and says, we will testify. Guess what? Just like the first day, the resurrection. Who proclaimed it? The women. Thanks be to God, right? That's the sermon for today. No, but we're, we'll continue together. But we do have a couple of testimonies lined up for today. And we'll open it up. But um, today, uh, we'll be hearing from a few. We'll be hearing from our sister, Christine Mativo, and she'll be sharing with us a little bit about her journey and how she experienced God for these three months while she was away in her trip to Kenya in East Africa, her uh, birth country. And also, we'll be hearing from our uh, good friend, uh, Danny Mariscal, who is a, a friend and a leader, a pastor over at our partner church, Rise Church. And uh, we have uh, his wife, Christine, here with us, and Edward as well, who serves a role over there. So please greet them in the name of the Lord um, after service. Um, But in between, we'll have opportunities for others to be able to share of God's goodness and faithfulness in their lives. And just as we shared last week, um, the way that we're going to share is we're just sharing from the heart, really. There's no exact agenda. There's no program here. It's really just sharing about God's faithfulness, God's promises, and God's hope in our lives. And you can get the ball rolling with simply saying something like, I am thankful to God because, or I celebrate God's faithfulness in my life because, or I have come to know God through this experience. However the Spirit moves you, we're here for it. And each testimony should be about three minutes or so in order to give others an opportunity to be able to share as well. And you can uh, share a scripture verse as well as, as God leads you. But to keep it simple, just share with us your name, how long you've been uh, walking with the Lord actively and with, uh, intentionally um, in your faith journey. And then you can share how has Jesus Christ given you hope today? How do you experience hope in Jesus today? And then you can also share how has God's love given you strength even for tomorrow? So 
we're going to um, take an opportunity to be able to share with one another. And we can actually put that slide up uh, there on just um, instructions for uh, sharing testimonies, just your name. Uh, puedes compartir tu nombre y cuánto tiempo has estado uh, caminando con el Señor. Y también cómo Jesucristo te da esperanza por hoy. Yeah, so those are um, some of the ways that will guide our time together, but again, as the Lord leads. So um, I'm, uh, we're, we're just going to trust that God is the one leading our time together, and we're going to invite first our sister Christine to be able to share with us how she experienced God on the other side of the world. Let's welcome our sister Christine once again. Thank you for this opportunity to share. I am not a natural public speaker, so I might be nervous and shaky, but I really want to share this. And I hope at the end you will know, you will hear about the goodness and the faithfulness of God. Amen. Um, I just came from Kenya after being there for nine weeks. And um, I'll translate for you a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, regresé de Kenia después de estar allí por nueve semanas. And I had a really good time. Um, Tuve un tiempo uh, uh, bonito. <laughs> But as, as I was um, coming back and reflecting on the good time that I had, I was in an Emirate flight from Kenya to Dubai. And from Kenya to Dubai, I felt like the people that I, I was living with my sister and her family, and I was very close to, I'm very close to one of my sisters, and Cuando she traveled with me everywhere I went. Wow. Cuando estaba regresando, estaba pensando en todo el pueblo, en toda la familia allá, que dejé especialmente mi hermana. And this family took me to the airport. So from Dubai to, uh, from Kenya to Dubai, I fell asleep, and when I woke up, I felt like my sister was sitting next to me. It was actually somebody else, but I felt it's like the, the, my family spirit was still with me. And um, when I left Dubai and I was coming back to the United States, I was reflecting on um, how sad I felt and how I really didn't want to leave Kenya. And I'm thinking about that and I'm almost crying and then something clicked in my head and I want to say the spirit of God. Cuando estaba regresando, estuve un poco triste de, de regresar de, de mi tiempo allá, pero después Dios me habló. Uh -huh. um, it reminded me of how well I bonded with my brothers and my sisters, how much time I spent with them, and the good time I had. But when my brain clicked, uh -huh. I also, it also reminded me that I'm going towards family, uh -huh. uh, my daughter, her husband their baby who is four years old, who's been asking for me, <laughs> my friends who I love and who love me like family, this church. Amen. And all of a sudden, I realized that I was in between the goodness of God. Mm. I was over there and I was so loved. I felt so comfortable that I didn't want to leave. And now I'm going to a place where I'm so loved and so comfortable that I really also want to go there. Mm -hmm. And it was such a beautiful dilemma. I almost started crying and smiling at the same time. And I felt like embarrassed because I was really sm smiling. And I thought people were looking at me and wondering, what's, what's wrong with this woman? <laughs> Estuve, uh, sentí la presencia de Dios en mi regreso de ese viaje porque sentí que Dios me está enviando de un lugar de amor a ya recibir más amor con mi familia y comunidad aquí en mi hogar. So I started the story at the end, which is the good ending. The beginning was I was dreading this trip. Mm -hmm. And I was dreading this trip for two reasons. Estaba nerviosa de tomar este, este viaje originalmente, por dos razones. Mm -hmm. um, for one, I was taking home my husband's ashes. He had mm -hmm. passed away in 2021. Uh, una razón es que fuimos a enterrar a mi esposo que falleció en, eh, hace dos años. Uh -huh. He had wanted to be cremated and buried next to his mother. 
And in Kenya, people do not understand cremation. Mm. And when I told his brother what he wanted, his brother, his brother asked me, and you agree to that? Mm -hmm. And so I knew that I had, uh, I, I would have a difficult time with the family explaining to, to them how to bury ashes and how, why this happened. Mm -hmm. Eh, hubo dificultades en, uh, en todo, todos esos, esos temas de cómo enterrar a mi esposo con su familia allá. Uh -huh. The other reason was that um, I've always gone home. I've been here for over 30 years, but I've always gone home to see my parents. Mm. La otra razón que fue difícil este viaje es que siempre he regresado a mi país para visitar a mis padres, pero esta vez... My mom passed away in 2014, mm. and my dad passed away in 2019. Pero ya mis padres han fallecido y ya no están allí en ese país. Mm -hmm. So after my mom passed away, we decided as a family that we're going to meet together. Uh, I have three brothers and three sisters, and uh, one brother lives here. So six of us, or six of us, were over there. Pero me pude reunir con mis hermanas y hermanos allá en mi país, en Kenia. So as a way to support my dad, we decided we we're going to meet once every two months at one of the siblings' house as a way to continue that meeting because my mother was the glue that held us all together. Uh -huh. So I was going into this meeting. Uh, I decided to go there for, two, for nine weeks because I wanted to go to this meeting, the first one that was happening in June in April, and then I wanted to be there in time to sponsor another one, because mm -hmm. whoever is having the meeting is the one who sponsors it. Yeah, fui para unas reuniones ahí con mis hermanos y hermanas. So I was having a really hard time going to this family meeting and not going to be able to see my dad. And um, fui de, Fue difícil estar en una reunión con familia sin mis padres estar ahí. But it was so good to see my family. It was so good to be welcomed by them. Um, but I also find out that there were some who also thought I would never go mm -hmm. because they knew I was so close to my parents and the reason I would go is that. Mm -hmm. Y estuve en la reunión ahí. Um, muchos pensaron que jamás iba a regresar a mi país porque ya habían fallecido mis padres, pero ahí pude estar con ellos, los otros familiares. So, uh, let me see how I can shorten this story. So um, I was able to be with my family, actually to be with this family in April and spend a really good time with them. We basically meet every two weeks and have church. And mm -hmm. that's what we did this first time that I was there. So it was a good welcome to see my family. Fue una gran bienvenida con mi familia allá. And... Um, and, and in June, before, right before the weekend I came, we, meet at, we met at my parents' house, and I hosted that meeting, and it was an overnight meeting. And it was so good because um, more people came. Um, I was able to see the faithfulness of God because uh, my, all my brothers and sisters came. Most of their kids came, and their grandkids. And there ended up being 28 people mm -hmm. who came to my parents' home. Yeah, fue, fue, pude ver la fidelidad de Dios allí en, en las reuniones que tuvimos allá. Hasta casi 28 personas juntos alabando a Dios. And when we counted the ones who were missing, mm -hmm. there were 29 of them. Mm -hmm. So the faithfulness of God is that in this situation is we have been able to stay together even though our parents were not there. Mm. And we have grown so much. We are more than a church. <laughs> y aunque hemos uh, uh, han fallecido mis padres, el, el gozo, el testimonio que tengo es que mi, mi familia ha seguido um, unida juntos, alabando a Dios. Mm. And then as far as my, my husband's family, it took two, two, uh, two days, two meetings to talk about cremation, to talk about burying ashes, to talk about a lot of time to convince them to bury him exactly the way he wanted to be buried, without a casket, mm -hmm. you know, not in a six feet deep, but in a way that he wanted 
to plant a plant on top of their grave. It took two days to convince them this. But at the end, we talked about uh, dust to dust. Mm. And, and <laughs> we understood it in a way that we have never understood it because usually we get buried in a casket, in a really beautiful casket that nobody ever sees. Mm -hmm. And we were able to talk about how uh, this particular uh, way my husband wanted to be buried is usually when people die here, especially Kenyans, we send them home and you spend so much money sending them home. Mm -hmm. There is so much need, especially in my family's, in my husband's family's need. There are so many kids who need to go to school and who do not have fees. And my husband wanted to make sure we don't spend this money sending him in a casket mm -hmm. so we can bury him and nobody would ever see him, would ever see that beautiful casket. So uh, I don't even know how to conclude this other than as I was in the airplane. Mm -hmm. Ya en conclusión, um, muchas conversaciones logísticas de cómo enterrar a, a mi esposo, pero ya cuando estaba regresando en el avión. As I was thinking about how I'm missing my family, and then I'm going towards a family, and then I got happy thinking about how the goodness of God is just everywhere that I go. Mm -hmm. I started thinking about that song by C.C. Wynan, the, actually the goodness of God and how he is so faithful. Mm -hmm. And there's a part where it says the goodness of God is running after me. Amen. And I felt exactly like that. The goodness Amen. of God is just chasing me. Wherever I go, there it is. Wherever I go, there it is. Even in the darkest time, the song says, he is there like no other. He is a father. He is a friend. And we all live in his goodness. So my message to you is that God is faithful and he is good. He is a father and he wants good for us. So we just trust him. Amen. 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 El mensaje es que Dios siempre es fiel y su amor está alrededor de nosotros, donde sea que vayamos. God is good. Amen. His goodness is running after us even when we least expect it. And I love that word from our sister Christine, being caught up in the goodness from one place to another place, surrounded by God's goodness. Sometimes all we need to do is just pay attention to that. Amen. Well, we're going to continue to hear stories of God's goodness together. Um, and as I mentioned, we have a, a couple people to that we want to be able to hear from today, and um, we give God thanks that our uh, brother and sister Liz and Ruben Madrid uh, were here with us, continue to pray for them um, as they're navigating this time of, of sickness, um, and we lift them up together as a community. But let's hear other stories of who God has been to you and about the faithfulness of God in your life. Vamos a escuchar otras um, y, uh, testimonios. And again, just briefly, as, as it says there, you can just uh, share with us your name and also um, how long you've been walking with the Lord and also how has Jesus Christ given you hope for today and strength for tomorrow. So who would be like to share? And let's go ahead and those who haven't shared be the ones to be able to share and limit our time to about three minutes to give others an opportunity to be able to share in their testimony. Um, ¿Quién quisiera dar un testimonio? Y también podemos traducir para usted um, también. Um, so let's go ahead and, and continue in that spirit. Um, how has God been faithful? And how has he given you strength for today and hope for tomorrow? So who, who can we uh, hear from here today? We have the microphone right here. All right, our brother Al. Yeah, let's give our brother Al a round of applause. What's your name, how long you've been in the Lord, and tell us. Uh, my name's Alba Roma. Me amo Alberto Royema. There you go. <laughs> no need for translation, yeah. <laughs> well, that's about all the Spanish I can, I can conjure up. Anyway, uh, yeah, I've been a Christian all my life. Um, 
Um, but five, six years ago, Ruben and Liz invited my wife and I to church here at Imago. Um, so yeah, I, I was in I was in church and cruising along, but um, the Imago Church um, really the Holy Spirit. I always felt the Holy Spirit, um, Pastor Carlos. I appreciate him. He uh, called kind of he called me out, right? Step up and step out. <laughs> I still remember that was the first year, and uh, so it, it was challenging because I was I was cruising, right, and everything was good. Uh, but I just feel the Holy Spirit here amongst the Mago. Um, my wife and I found a church that we can go to together. Um, and I've seen Reuben and Liz have, have left now. I don't think Reuben is feeling good. But, uh, yeah, uh, a shout-out to Reuben and Liz because they uh, invited us here. They, they got us going here. So, um, yeah, he, that was just um, a, good, a good thing for Reuben. And, and uh, I always think of if when someone's crying, it's always a Reuben moment because uh, – <laughs> Reuben could not get up here without crying, right? But he was inspirational, um, inspired for inspirational for me. And uh, I just uh, thank the Amago community. The, the church here is just, uh, yeah, it, it renewed and revigorated, invigorated me to um, just, to, just to get my life back to um, worshiping God. And it, it was an emotional ride for me, right? It's just, I just appreciate it so much. Thank you. Le yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Let's give him a round of applause. Le doy gracias a Dios porque él me ha, ha dado una nueva oportunidad aquí con esta comunidad de crecer en mi, en mi uh, conocimiento de Dios. Um, amazing how, again, it's never too late. God can do something new through anything, even through challenging, through unknown, through uncertain circumstances. The God that we worship is the God of new things, and he's not done yet. He's done it before. He'll do it again and again and again. Amen. Let's hear other stories of God's faithfulness. Quinn, Quinn Wilson, everyone. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I'm so grateful for, for Quinn um, just for his life and um, just his who he's been, got to spend some time together last week and just pray. And this is a young man who's on a journey. He's searching for God, and that's the promise of God. Amen. When you seek me, you will find me. When you seek me with all your heart. So, Quinn, just uh, share with us uh, your name, how your journey has been so far, and how you've experienced God. Uh, yeah, so, um, like uh, Pastor Carlos said, uh, my name is uh, Quinn uh, Wilson. Um, I've been uh, walking with the Lord for uh, very recently. Uh, it's just something that I think I was always looking, but uh, just in different ways. And now I finally found a very nice community that I'm very grateful for, all of you. Amen. Here you guys are all very nice. And uh, I hope to, if I haven't met you, I hope to meet you and talk to you. Um, Let me translate for you a little bit. Soy nuevo en mi camino con Dios y estoy tan gozoso estar parte de esta comunidad. So... Uh, the story that uh, I wanted to share was uh, something that uh, um, I think the divine speaks to us in uh, symbols, and uh, it can't, uh, just because it can't, sometimes it can maybe speak to us directly, but uh, the, the symbols are a very powerful thing. And uh, a veces Dios nos habla en, en símbolos, en señales. Mm -hmm. So uh, this happened um, in uh, May. Um, this was uh, when uh, me and my girlfriend were coming up on our uh, year anniversary, and um, it was, it was a time where I was uh, very uh, just reviewing my life and that year that I uh, had passed with her. And, uh, yeah, and, and uh, hace el mayo pasado recibí una señal de Dios. Um, I was very sure on like my commitment with her, but I was just feeling lost in uh, like life and uh, uh, just like the directions I was going and like uh, just didn't really know like just lost and confused, and uh, just need like a, a like a good direction to go. And uh, en ese tiempo me sentía bien confundido y necesitaba dirección. Uh, so I, uh, I asked God for uh, a sign. Y le pedí a Dios por una señal. Uh, I asked uh, I asked God for uh, a sign of. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'm very nervous. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I asked God for a sign of um, a swan because uh, it symbolizes my uh, grandmother. Um, because that was uh, the animal that uh, symbolized her. And, uh, Le pedí a Dios por una señal de, de, de 
un, un pájaro, un swan, <laughs> I forgot, but how do you say swan, but uh, how do you say swan? <laughs> we'll remember. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> es swan. <laughs> But uh, I, I asked for. Uh, Pedí una señal de Dios. Uh-huh. I asked for a, a, uh, to see a swan in uh, the next day to come, and um, which would uh, be me, uh, my uh, girlfriend, and I, uh, uh, our year anniversary. And um, I just let it pass, and uh, I didn't really know if it was going to happen or not. I was just unsure. And uh, but um, I was going around getting everything that I needed for uh, to celebrate, and uh, when I. Uh, I I uh I remember I had this thought of uh this uh car that my girlfriend really liked. I didn't really see it. Um we had gone to this uh gas station on uh, Caldwell um out by uh, Lovers uh Lane and uh mm-hmm. it uh it has like this little shop in it that uh had a, a whole bunch of uh like uh different arts and uh, uh arts and crafts stuff that these people have created and they're selling in the store and uh I remember she really liked this card and I thought um that would be something good to give her. You know, the show that I, I remembered that she liked it and uh, that uh, I already knew she liked it, but I couldn't really uh, remember what it was because um, it had been uh, probably around uh, Christmas when uh, she uh, saw it. And uh, Vi una tarjeta que le quise comprar a, a mi amiga. So uh, I, I uh, go to this uh uh, car wash with, the, and I go in the store, and as soon as I walk in, I I knew that I was going to see the swan, and that uh, that uh, that that the swan was on the car, uh, card, and uh, I just liked it so much that it was in the symbol of uh, the the love that I have for my girlfriend, and because I think that's one of the highest virtues is love, and uh, that it came in that form of the card that uh, that I gave to her, you know, and uh, it was two swans like. Uh, mm-hmm. together and uh, that was a that was a perfect symbol for me and uh it, it just let me know that everything was going to be all right and that um even though that um i don't know where i'm going that um it's it'll be okay amen amen thank you quinn thank you uh dios le dio un símbolo del pájaro que le recordó que va a haber paz en su vida y que todo estará bien that's amazing. Lord, give me a sign. And sometimes even when we don't know who we're calling out to, God is still faithful. And God has been faithful in the life of Quinn as well as in others. Um, like I've mentioned before, we can keep this going all day long. And uh, before our brother uh, Danny uh, closes us out with just a, a brief word from the heart on being with God rather than just doing for God or anything else that the Lord has put in his heart, we may have uh, time for just uh, one more, just a one minute or two minute brief testimony. This is the goodness of God in my life. And, um, and, and look at this, out of the mouths of the youth. Let's go ahead and invite Aiden up here. Give this young man a shout of praise. Oh my goodness. And, you know, we are, are so proud of you, Aiden, as well as the other uh, young people here in the church. But we're inspired by you. And we know that God's doing amazing things in your life. Here is a, a, man of, a boy of God who's becoming a man of God. And we're going to see incredible things happen in his life. So give it up for Pastor Aiden. Come on. <laughs> and I think you're on. Yeah, it's on. Okay, my name is Aiden, and I've been following God since I was very little. I remember we would go to church since I was, like, two and three and, like, four. Um, So a few years ago, in 2019 of December, I had fractured my shoulder. Mm. So... um, Hace unos años, dos años, me quebré mi mi hombro. Mm -hmm. So I was in a lot of pain, and I just waited the next day because I remember it was on a church on a church day so it was Mm -hmm. on a sunday Uh so it was already like probably one Mm -hmm. and uh we were so my mom like she was like um i don't think you really broke it because i wasn't really crying Mm -hmm. so (laughs) i don't know if she could believe it and then so the next day i was waking up a lot and i couldn't go to sleep and then my mom took me um to valley children's and they're like 
Well, you broke your um, shoulder and you fractured it. Wow, mi mamá me llevó al hospital y sí confirmaron que había quebrado mi hombro. Mm -hmm. So then, a few days later, they had scheduled um, an appointment with the orthopedic doctor mm -hmm. to see like what's going to happen and everything. Y, y el doctor me, me chequeó. Mm -hmm. So after um, we got the appointment, they're like, we're going to put on... It was like, I forgot the name of it. It wasn't a cast. It was just like a thing where you would carry your um, hand in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sling? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then we had another appointment, and they're like, well, th this, like, we, it's not really curable. So by the next time we see you, you're going to have to fast, because if you're not hit old or anything, we're going to have to do a surgery. So I had started fasting, and I gave God a promise and tell him, God, I have faith and hope in you, God. So I'm praying that you heal me from my arm, God, because you can work miracles. Oh, wow. Amen. That's just so beautiful to hear, actually. Que hice una oración y dije, Dios, tú eres Dios de milagros. Yo sé que me puedes sanar y me y puedes sanar mi hombro. So later, we had the last appointment with the doctor, and I was fasting, and I was like, God, please heal me. Um, this is before the doctor comes in. So we had taken x-rays and everything. And by the time, he, he took a while. So I'm like, um, oh my gosh, I think I'm going to have to have surgery. Mm -hmm. And I was all scared because I'm like, I don't want to have surgery. And especially on the arm. And I'm going to have to go to school like this. So I was just continuing praying in the room. And then he came in and he's like, look, take a look. So at the x-ray. So I looked at it, and I didn't see her crack at all. Wow. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Estuve orando y orando, y vino el doctor, y vimos uh, el, el rayo X, y no, no hubo nada de quebramiento con mi hombro. Mm -hmm. And I was happy. I'm like, God, this was all you. And then, then later, I mean, during that time, the doctor's like, I've never seen no one heal this fast. Wow. <laughs> Dijo el doctor, jamás ha visto a alguien um, recuperar tan rápido. And, mm -hmm. I'm, and then he left and we were leaving. I'm like, mom, I know God did all this for me. God, and he's faithful with his children. Amen. 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 Thank you, Aiden. Wow. Out of the mouths of babies, of the young, of the youth, <laughs> the Lord will be glorified. And it's amazing. I'm always inspired to see that, how from generation to generation, God continues to build up his people. God even called kings when they were as young as, as Aiden's age, 12, 13 years old, mighty young men, women of God. And Aiden was also one of the first when we announced VBS. He says, I want to help. I want to help kids. I want to help kids get to know God. And he's going to be there this week. And so are other kids here. Le damos tanta gloria a Dios. And just as we conclude now, I'm, I want to invite our uh, brother Danny to be able to just share a brief word. Um, he's encouraged me. He's encouraged um, the team here at Imago before to just remember to keep first things first, to keep the main thing the main thing. And that can be a word for us as we conclude our time in testimonies and in worship together this morning. Thank you. Um, what a joy it is to be here with you guys this morning to witness just God moving in multiple ways. Uh, as Carlos was sharing about the body being one, the beauty is that the body is not just here in this building, uh, but we're part of a body that meets down the street here, but we're still one. Mm -hmm. And there's beauty in that. Somos unidos en Cristo, diferentes partes uh, de, de la iglesia, pero juntos como un cuerpo. Mm -hmm. Part of my role at RISE is leadership development. It's one of the things I'm privileged to do is to share with our leaders and developing them into the leaders that God has uh, called us to be. But part of that leading is one, as, as he was sharing, of not doing, but of being. Mm -hmm. Parte de, de lo que yo hago es animo a líderes y desarrollo a líderes para que sepan que es importante primero um, uh, estar con Dios en vez de nomás hacer cosas para Dios. And, 
I believe the inspiration of hearing the young share. My son's name is Aiden as well, and so there's a connection. And to be able to hear Aiden share something that we are born doing, mm -hmm. which is actually just being. Mm -hmm. There is a being process that's all we can do because we don't do anything. But at some point, we're taught that doing supersedes being, mm -hmm. and that's inaccurate. Dios nos ha llamado a estar con él, no nomás para hacer obras para él, pero estar y permanecer con él. So part of what God has shown me, my family, and what I'm able to share with our, our members, our church, is that we need to learn to, to reclaim uh, the being aspect. And we see pictures of that in Scripture. Uh, with the story I think I was sharing was Mary and Martha, mm -hmm. who, who you see Martha feeling the need to do, all this doing to be done. En la Escritura vemos esta historia de Marta y María, y Marta siente que necesita ser más y más para Dios. Mientras María está con Jesucristo. And there's nothing wrong with doing. Doing is actually very important. Y no hay nada mal con obras. Eso es algo bueno. But Pero, our doing needs to be a consequence of our being. Mm -hmm. And so often we don't yet know who we are in Christ. And so our doing can either be in vain or in performance to try to earn favor from God instead of recognizing it's already there. Mm -hmm. Amen. La gracia de Dios es lo que nos hace bien con Dios. No son nuestras obras. So Aiden didn't have to do anything to earn God's favor. He was able just to sit and be and receive. And there wasn't any performance that he needed to do. There was no performance he could have done to receive what God had for him other than be available and willing to receive. Amen. La gracia de Dios ya está con cada uno de nosotros. No por obras, pero por la gracia de Dios. So my ministry as a pastor for years or what we do in worship or all the things I'm relearning that even being here today is a consequence of me learning to be in his presence and encounter him. And then that propels me to do all the things that I'm called and gifted to do. Lo principal en nuestro camino de Dios es permanecer en su presencia y lo demás es fruto de eso. So that's my encouragement to, yeah. to you and to the church as we continue to partner with Rise yes, and amen. do, it's to see what is God going to do as we continue just to dive into who he's called us to be. Amen. 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 And uh, Brother Danny, would you just uh, 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 pray for us? Pray mm. and, and close out our time here mm. together as we prepare for worship and to close out with our final song. Yeah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for the image that you've given us, Imago, the way that you have called us to be your image bearers. Yes, God. And I pray that that identity being given by you is the place that we stand on. That we don't need to earn image. We don't need to earn your gift, but you freely give it. And so from that, we, we get to be and do all the things that you've called us into. I thank you for, for this church, for this body, for who and what you're doing and who you're bringing the gifts and the talents, but more so the fact that people are hungry to encounter you yes. in a real way. Sí, yes. Through worship, through the worship, through testimonies, through the worship of encountering your word, that our face would be adamant about wanting to see your face, that as we read scripture, as we do the things, it isn't to do something and accomplish something, but to simply to sit and to be and to look for your face in all aspects of walk of life in the symbols of a gas station, or the things that we can see at home in the healing of a broken arm, yes. all the ways that we can see your face at work and encounter you every moment of the day. That is our joy, that is our privilege, to be called into, an, into a paradigm where we can just observe what you are doing and choose to join you in that work. Yes, God. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. That's, we're going to prepare for our final song. And just in that same spirit, Lord, we just entrust all things to you. Confiamos en ti, Dios Santo. Lord, you've heard all of these testimonies that have been lifted up to you. You've heard these voices. You've heard these stories, Lord. And we've heard and witnessed you doing new things. You bringing new life out of the old. You, Lord, communicating to us that you're not done. Señor, nos has comunicado que no has terminado la, la buena obra que empezaste en nosotros. Lord, the good work that you started in us, you will bring to completion, Lord, until the day of Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you. And as we conclude in this time of worship, we lift up every voice and receive this as our prayer, Lord God, that our trust and our dependence is on you, not in ourselves, not in our situations. What we talked about, we testified about when our situation said one thing, you, God, had the final word. And for that, we thank you and we're grateful. Thank you, Jesus. We lift you up. Te damos toda la gloria, Dios Santo. We lift you up and we praise you. Receive this final worship song as a sweet aroma, as a sweet and faithful prayer to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Let's stand as we conclude in our final song. <laughs>